Mmm, bacon. How else do you think we have the energy to build a house? Well, we haven't been eating breakfast. No. I might have got a little bit of chalk in the bacon. Uh oh. But I think the chalk is edible. There's chalk in there. <laughs> Remind me to get more little earplugs when we go okay. to the hardware store. Okay. Nice. Are you munching on bacon? No. It's time consuming to cook, but you're never happy when there's bacon around, right? Never sad. Do you taste the chalk? Do what? Do you taste the chalk? I don't even know what chalk tastes like. <laughs> so today is dedicated to being poor ready in 24 hours. We talked on the phone with Casey this morning for a while and he helped us kind of look at our structure to see if there were any problemed areas. And I wouldn't say we have any major problems, but there are places that we should probably reinforce. We have some plywood around, we might need to get some more tomorrow. So today is cutting of random lengths of plywood and pasting it everywhere. Cut and paste. Ruining perfectly good plywood. I think that having the support of Lightform has been very helpful because they work with their product a lot and so they know how much reinforcement's necessary. I think because Alyssa and I are so, I don't know what the word is, like <clears throat> head over heels for this stuff, we're trying really hard to do things right that we're very inclined to overbuild. Um, Casey even commented that <laughs> this this is probably like overkill, overkill. one of the strongest <laughs> door bucks yeah. he's ever seen. He said most people just put a piece of wood inside the foam and attach it to the studs and call, call it, a, it day. a day. That would have been a lot faster yep, it's okay <laughs> and a though. lot cheaper. But it wouldn't have kept our door the right size mm. because if you did that, you'd lose an inch and a half of concrete. So there's that. Hmm. Um, you probably could have shoved a piece of treated plywood in there or something, I don't know, or treated wood in there. So it's helpful to have their support because you can look at these blocks and see where we've done damage and say, that's okay, don't worry about that, or put a yep. little foam on it, or that plywood, the crap out of that. <laughs> I think it's worth sharing because our experience has been consistent with this. When you have a set of house plans, I think for those folks who might not be experienced like we are, who are not experienced like we are not experienced, <laughs> the illusion is that when you have a set of house plans, you now have an infallible set of plans that if you follow it to a T, your building will turn out perfect. You don't have to think anymore, just build the plan. Sorry folks, this is not Ikea by a mile. The conversation this morning with Casey went something like this, don't cut ties on ICF, that's not necessary. And I said, well then how the heck do you get the bent rebar in the thing? And he said, well if you do it that way, yes, that's the only way, but that's not the only way to get rebar in there. I'm like, oh. So it turns out a lot of uh, contractors will actually bend a 90 degree elbow and slide that in the corners to meet your corner overlap requirements and then run straight pieces into those elbows meeting your lap requirements. We bent the rebar, the whole bar, and tried to slide it in and tuck the corner in, which you cannot do. So we had to cut the ties. This is one of those things where the house plans don't really represent real world building requirements and there's always this gap between what's drawn and what's built. There's a term we've run into, it's called as built. That implies it's not as drawn. <laughs> so sometimes you have to go back and update the drawings to represent the actual building. That could be a nugget of gold for those folks out there who do hire someone to, to, to draw a set of plans, have it engineered, etc. You still need to ask a lot of questions and you might need to step outside of what's drawn to achieve the goal you're trying to achieve without doing damage to your building products. After talking about a strategy for a little while, Alyssa and I concluded that it would be best to put wood on the end cap of our buttress. We're gonna form this with a buck, but we need to put some sort of material here to kind of terminate the wall. I don't think we just want concrete sticking out here. And I talked about putting foam on the end. That would look nice. It would keep it from just being exposed concrete, but you can't really attach anything to foam. The foam that we have has no studs or anything in it, so you couldn't affix anything to it directly. So we talked about adding uh, a piece of wood. 
which I think will work pretty well. Um, the only major issues is that I had originally planned on extending this buttress four inches so that we could capitalize on this final rebar dowel. So I'm having to notch out the, the wood that we'll be putting here for this rebar dowel. And then I think we can actually just push these corner rebar in slightly to be nearly flush with the end of this wall. So that'll work pretty good. A little bit more work than I anticipated. I guess a lot more planning would have been good for this buttress situation, but never built one before. So we'll get to work on building the end cap for that. And what we're going to do is just leave screws in it. And then when we pour the concrete in there, the concrete will form around the screws and that should hold it in. Jesse says we have to move this whaler east about two inches, and it looks like we can do that. It's about as much as he's gonna get. Ow. <sighs> Bugaboo was up on the catwalk again this morning and Jesse watched him go down this ladder on his own very slowly and carefully. Before we go too crazy with uh, reinforcing, we need to plummet. I've been looking forward to this moment. It does appear to me that everything's leaning in a little bit at the top, which makes sense because this bracing system seems to pull it in pretty tight and I'm really curious to see how it pushes out. What we're gonna do is we're gonna attach these boards to the ends of all the walls and we're gonna run a string over the top and then we're gonna measure and see how far out we're in we need to go. So next we're gonna use another piece of wood with the same dimensions and we're gonna run it along here. So you can see here, this is very pushed in. This is touching the string. My goodness. My muscles don't really want to be lifting stuff today. No. Lift like 100 pieces of rebar yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's not gonna work. It's just bowing out. And this didn't move that at all. Wow. What a crappy piece of wood. Look, at it. by the time it gets up here, it's like a whole quarter turn. I'm gonna move this turnbuckle out. Hurry, Jesse, the concrete truck is coming in like 22 hours. Winter is also coming, hurry! Plan B is to attach these bowed boards to each other to straighten them out. It stopped. Nothing, no. Jesse's decided to flip our zuckle to the other end because our stakes are moving. The whole thing is not working. It's like broken. Two things are going to happen. One, the turnbuckle is going to be on the bottom, which means I can get to it. Yeah, that's good. Without having to like yep. shoot the moon. And two, we can stake it way better Yep. with the turnbuckle on the bottom because it's got a dowel hole in it. All right, you ready for movement? Yep. Okay. Um, it's very close. 
16. Even with that two by four there, it still wants to bend like right here. So it turns out when we start cranking on this wall that's not even full of concrete yet, this board right here is warping and bending and twisting under compression. I don't know if we don't have any more 14s. I can try bracing it down here on the bottom. See if that helps. We'll just we'll just turn this into an eight by eight by the time we're all done. We've now just about made this a six by six. And let's go a little further, huh? So Alyssa's been kind of check checkeroo. Wow, it actually is looking a lot better, but yeah, there's still still a little bit of a a really good way to check this would be a six foot level, but we don't have one. We do have a four foot level. That's not completely true. We have our uh, we call it our masonry level. It's not really a masonry level, but uh, let me see if I can find it real quick here. So this level has had a piece of wood attached to it, so it's more like a six foot level. Well, this level's. No good. Let's try this one. <laughs> what in the world? Oh yeah, see. I don't know. I think this is why it was be became a masonry level, because all the other bubbles are actually broken. Oh yeah, they're like massively not good. <laughs> so that up there is so ridiculously out of plumb, it's not even funny. So my level right now is, is plumb. Okay. So it looks to me like the top part still needs to come in. Oh, probably three quarters of an inch. Out, you mean? Sorry, out. What, don't be deceived by the string. The string only means it's straight. Yep. The string does not mean it's plumb. Yep. So before we can make any more adjustments, we've got to move these braces around. I think we ought to just take a brace break and just do them all because I can't, yeah, you can just be standing up there or you can be helping me. Well, we're on the umpteenth brace and we're making them all match the system we probably should have done in the first place. Only three more to go. And then we're back to plumbing and leveling, which is where we were an hour and a half ago. Is it right there? Um, you're about half the width of this board. That's looking pretty good. Good. You can even come in a smidgen if you want. Good, good, good. That's pretty good. A little more. A little more. Good. That's good. Wall number three. Yeah, so in theory, if the corners are plumb and the wall's straight, the wall's plumb. This one we're gonna do a little bit differently. We're gonna try to plumb the corner first and then straighten the wall. Golden? Mm, nice. Ooh, right on the money. Wow, it's like you just need to let it all go. How are we looking? Sometimes you all just need to let it go. Let it go. <laughs> let it go. <laughs> a little loose. Keep checking. Keep checking. Keep checking. Okay. It's okay. Um, come in here. It's pretty good. That's good there. Good. Yeah, I think that's pretty plumb. It's pretty good, doesn't it? Yep. Dang, that's straight. Plumb? Yeah. Look at that. Dead on. And this gap, I mean, it's it's nice. Yay! You're dirty. That's better. Can you see now? Yeah. We got it all plumbed. It took Squared. a little bit of like just back and forth, but we're good. What we did was we knew this corner was plumb and square. So all we had to do was check the width here and make sure that's plumb. And then everything else was a no brainer after that. Didn't make any sense because we kept pulling the wall in. Yep. And I'm like, what? I know the wall's already leaning in. It needs to go out. Yay! On that note, we're going to get sandwiches. We hath, we hath earned our sandwiches. Well, sandwich break turned into Home Depot break. <laughs> Everyone here on a Sunday is closed, so we had to go all the way to Home Depot to get more plywood and two inch screws. But we're back and the sun is completely clouded over. So we're gonna see how much work we can get done in a couple of hours. 
Jesse's gonna help me get set up to make our chalk lines. I think we decided we're not gonna cut the tops of our blocks until after the concrete is poured. Instead, we're gonna try to float to the chalk line. So this is why we bought a wall bracket kit. So this attaches to the wall bracket. We will attach this to the wall. This can be adjusted up. Oh, cool. So that it shoots above the wall. And then I'm putting your receiver on this little stake and we'll set this height mm -hmm. to the top of the wall in that back corner. And then you'll go around inside the wall and make Wait. a line where that height is. That'll work. It's very sensitive. Perfect. Oh wait, you're gonna need this. Oh, thanks. Full of the uh, to do's that we're working on right now, where we've got these orange spray paints. We actually had to clip this top tie to get our rebar in. So we're gonna be putting uh, 24 inches of plywood over this to strap it because the tie below it is still in place and the ties above it are in place. So by putting strapping over that, we're basically strengthening from here down to here and helping that to resist. It's not gonna blow out, but it would probably have some propensity to bulge, especially being on the bottom row. So we've got a few spots to do around the building there and we're gonna be doing inside and out where we can. There's some spots like in this back corner, we've already actually backfilled that with drain rock. And so it's up probably almost a block and a half. So that's gonna provide some force on the backside to help strengthen uh, during the pour. So I've got a few of those things to do. And then this common, or actually not a common seam, we're calling it like a relief cut where we severed this wall over here to bring it back into plumb. This is gonna have to have some strapping on the inside and outside. It's not such a big deal because it's basically like having a, two blocks. We just cut between them. All the ties are still intact and everything. So we're gonna do kind of just a sheet of plywood here and then on the outside. And I think that's probably knocking on eight feet. Um, we've got some L brackets. Uh, Lightform has advised us to basically make two by four L's to stick in here to reinforce that corner by the buttress on both sides. Um, we've got to get this buttress cap on. Lots of strapping. <laughs> and since we got the walls all plumbed and everything, once this is done, the strapping's all done, uh, we've got to get some foam in all the cracks and whatnot. And that really needs to be done tonight so that foam has time to set up. Hopefully, Alyssa's cruising on getting the uh, chalk line set on the inside of the forms. What's that? Meh, Alyssa's patience is kind of wearing thin for the old laser now. <laughs> and then a good neighbor stopped by to give us a little bit of a hand this evening. Very thankful for his extra help. And then he's volunteered to come by tomorrow morning and just be on hand for all the excitement for the poor. So busy this evening. We're going to be working till we can't work anymore. It's about eight-ish. Well, can you see? I can see you, can you see me? I think. Our worst fears are becoming a reality. The sun's going down and we're not done. We're not ready. We don't have much, maybe. It's not that we're not, yeah, we're under, not ready. Under an hour? Probably close. An hour. So, okay. bright and early in the morning. I don't know, I say put on headlamps. Out. Wake up at six. Get up at six. Okay. Probably 5.30, yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's not too much. Thankfully, we've had a little bit of help, which has caught us up, I think. If okay. without that, we'd have been pushing, but yeah. cameras probably can't see anymore, so we'll probably work for another half hour, maybe. Yep. And then uh, eat, shower, sleep, rinse, and repeat. We'll be back at it bright and early in the morning. Tomorrow's poor day. Ah! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. Um, don't forget to bring that laser in, for sure. Okay. Let's not leave it out. Just I'll, yeah, I'll go get that still. now. Yeah, it hasn't rained in a Shouldn't couple Shouldn't be months. on the scaffolding at night. It hasn't rained in a couple months, so I don't know why it would rain tonight. But right. Well, it's it cloudy. Poor, it's poor day tomorrow, so, you know, I mean, like... It'll probably rain. It'll probably rain. <laughs> it's going to be windy and uphill. Yeah. Good job today. You too. Good job getting these things plumb and square. That's pretty exciting. Yeah. And then, uh, yeah, running the chalk lines tomorrow, and then mud. How much mud? $11. $5,000 in mud. 
Whew. Dropping five Ouch. G's tomorrow. We're gonna have to add some zeros to our checkbook. I don't know if our checkbook goes that high. Yeah. <laughs> All right, we'll see you tomorrow. The tour is tomorrow. Ah! Ah! Are we being dramatic? No. Not really. True. Never give up. Almost done. Finishing by headlamp in true pre pour this fashion. Is, this is the first of many times we'll do this. Oh, yeah. I don't know what it is about concrete. I think it's because you have to involve so many people. Hopefully, most of the rest of our build will not be like this, but. Um, yeah. I mean, yeah, the slab might Kay. be this way, but. Yeah, the slab, maybe. It's like yeah. a finite time the truck is coming. Yeah. If it's late, it's a problem. If it's early, it's a problem. Yep. If things go wrong, now your concrete's trying to cure on you. Yep. Okay. Um, actually, if you want to get the water heater on and all that, that'd be great. I was just going to throw these zuckles on real quick. It's not a big deal. The tour is tomorrow. Ah!